How are you all doing and this is the storyteller. Today we are going to have an amazing story to share with you all. But as always before we dive and remember to hit that subscribe button and get ready for more amazing stories like this. Return of Mount Hua Sect Chapter 148 Anyone who touches my stuff is dead. 3. Hahuhu. These young kids. The first of the three killers of Wailing Ghost, Shadowless Wailing Ghost, stared at Mount Hua's disciple with red eyes. Without any skills, you go around aiming for precious things because you have faced nothing in life. So, this old man will kill you without pain. Had it not been for the sword tomb, he wouldn't have even thought about harming the disciples of Mount Hua. Even if Mount Hua had fallen, it still had a name that was greater than any small or medium sect. It wasn't a wise choice to go against such people. But this was the sword tomb. It was a place where outsiders couldn't reach nor see inside. Even if someone died here, the culprit couldn't be found, so he could use his hands as he pleased with peace of mind. The beggars union people next to Mount Hua were a bit annoying, but even if they were also killed, a word about it wouldn't reach the outside world. It's always good to have one less competitor. He licked his lips, and his pole blade sparkled blue. Kukaku. You young ones were greedy for nothing, he he. They will start regretting everything once their flesh is pierced. The younger brothers of the man also took out their weapons and threatened the disciples of Mount Hua. But. Why are they like that? The three killers of Wailing Ghost. In the Honam area, they were a notorious group that could make crying children stop with just their names. No matter how well known they were in the past, the disciples of Mount Hua and the Beggars Union wouldn't dare to lift their weapons against these notorious groups. However, the kids in front of them were calm, and there was even a sullen reaction on their faces. Since they are young, they must be scare. Hey! Yoon Jong sighed and opened his mouth. I understand what you mean, but you need to start thinking about things again. What? Shadowless wailing ghost's eyes opened wide. You arrogant bastard. No. It isn't like that. Sigh. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Let's see if you will keep saying that when we tear open that mouth of yours. It was then. Hoo. Suddenly, there was a loud roar next to him. And the shadowless wailing ghost's eyes went round. W what? A stranger appeared next to him. Uh? Then what of my younger brother? What happened to the brother who was standing there? His gaze descended downwards. Ha! Huh. Kook. His younger brother was wriggling under the foot of the stranger who had appeared suddenly. Seeing his young brother with his limbs twisted in a strange manner, he was angry. Ah! Uh. He lifted his gaze to once again look at the man who was crushing his younger brother with his feet. And he saw Chung Myung, who had a weird expression on his face. How can a person have such a grumpy face in such a situation? Just as he was about to speak, Chung Myung spoke first. Who are these guys? Was he talking about them? Who? Beck Chun, who was watching it, sighed and said, they're the three killers of Wailing Ghost, a group down in Honam. Chung Myung's head tilted. Three kills? Does that mean he wanted to be three times older? No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't matter. Crack. Crack. Chung Myung tilted his head left and right. Let's hit him and start our journey. Uh? Beck Chun narrowed his eyes as he looked at the man who was going to be buried right at the start of the tomb itself. It isn't even a great start. At least based on their group's name, he expected the man to be scarier than a tiger. It was no exaggeration to say that their actions were known throughout the land. And it was truly moving to see them beaten like local thugs, dragged along, and then thrown into the corner. Where do such idiots even come from? He doesn't seem to be in a good mood. And they are well-known people. But Beck Chun shook his head instead of trying to explain. He knew clearly that there was a huge difference between Chung Myung's standards and the standards of other well-known people. You jump down on them without knowing a thing and are now going to waste time? Chung Myung smiled at Yoon Jong's words. It won't take much time. Such a poisonous bastard. Yoon Jong shook his head. Mount Hua disciples had come down here very slowly by using their swords to not fall down. It was the same with the others. Rather than jumping in and facing a huge impact when landing on the ground, it was better to use swords to slow down the speed and land slowly. But that crazy man jumped without a thought and trampled on a human. The others? Look. Beck Chun pointed to something. A gate at the end of the stone chamber was wide open. There seems to be just one way. At least, the way out of here must be that one. Hmm. Is that so? Chung Myung glanced at the gate and then at the floor. Hmm? Then, as if he had found something, he began to collect the pieces which fell on the floor. What are you doing? This looks like a gate. Um? So why? Gather them. Chung Myung, who gathered all the pieces, tried to recreate the original shape of the gate, and frowned. This is. 
two swords were aimed diagonally, crossing each other. And in between, there was a large inscription that had sword tomb on it. So blunt, Chung Myung had a bitter smile. Why? Is something wrong? Chung Myung shrugged and asked Yun Zhong. Who came up with the word sword tomb? That. Maybe Yak Xian? He was giving a name to his own tomb? Isn't that one bad hobby to have? Uh. It felt weird when Chung Myung put it like that. Normally, names for such things are given after the tomb itself is created. The word sword tomb was the name of the untraceable seizing swords tomb. But here, it said sword tomb at the entrance. To a tomb which was never found, it has the nameplate that says sword tomb. Yun Zhang frowned. Then did the seizing sword himself give the name sword tomb to his tomb and spread it to the world? It could be that. Why? Well. Chung Myung shrugged his shoulders. How do we know what a man who lived 200 years ago thought? Chung Myung turned his head while holding the pieces he joined. The only door out of the stone chamber came into view. That is true. Whether this is the tomb of Yak Xian or not, the people who made this tomb aren't ordinary. Everyone nodded. To dig a hole this deep and create a stone chamber this size, they must have had unimaginable ability to do that. Don't relax. This is no ordinary tomb. While the disciples of Mount Hua were in their thoughts, Hong Dae Kuang approached Chung Myung. Mount Hua's divine dragon. What? What do we do now? Looking at the identities of those who came before us, this place is flooding with powerful people. It won't be easy to get inside with all of them. Um. In my opinion, it wouldn't be bad to find suitable people and try to make a group. First of all, wouldn't it be better to create a situation where we fully understand the sword tomb, and to check if something more exists? Chung Myung's face darkened. People who would want to share information or the treasure wouldn't even come here like this. It wasn't wrong. Chung Myung smiled and continued. And there is no need for us to step forward either. Things must have already started. If any of the people who came in have brains, they would have already united. Um. Right. Hong Dae Kuang nodded his head. There were various people inside. They must have been at odds on the outside, but now that they were inside, they had no choice but to join forces. Because the Wudong sect entered first. The Wudong sect's name and fame. No matter how many more famous people came in, they would be like fireflies in front of Wudong's name. And wasn't it common for warriors to group up and go against the lone wolves? There was no way that those who entered didn't have that thought running through their minds, if so. Hong Dae Kuang, who glanced at Chung Myung, trembled. Chung Myung was looking at the end of the chamber with an evil smile. Wudong's power will be drained without them even knowing that the emoji is aiming for them from behind. Too judging by the expression on Chung Myung's face, it seemed like things were going according to plan. See, Mount Hua's divine dragon. Uh? I know what you are thinking, but we need to get in and get the things we want. Otherwise, it'll be like being chased by dogs. If we want to move, it has to be now. Yes, of course. Chung Myung looked at the disciples of Mount Hua. Let's go, okay. The disciples of Mount Hua followed Chung Myung without another word. It doesn't seem like the place was made with good intentions, so don't fall behind. We know. Hong Dae Kuang glanced at Chung Myung and then went close to the disciples of Mount Hua. It was the same with the disciples of the Beggars Union. At that sight, Chung Myung smacked Hong Dae Kuang. Where are you going? W. We are trying to help. Beggars help? I have never once heard such words in my life. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. It isn't like I am chasing anything. I am just here. Let's help each other and live. When we go out, I will be of big help, you know. I am Hong Dae Kuang. Hong Dae Kuang. At that, Chung Myung smiled. Help me freeze to death. Uck. Hong Dae Kuang scratched his head. He wasn't in a situation where he could go his own way, but the monster in front of him didn't seem to like him. T there is something I can do. Do. Chung Myung opened his mouth. Uh? The normal plan for Chung Myung was to create some kind of fitting situation that would benefit Mount Hua. The beggars union was a body that handled information. The power of information was essential for Mount Hua, which was growing. Information was meaningless if Mount Hua wanted to live in the same way, but in Kango, where the strong survive, information had much more value. So, he thought that getting to know them and using them to gain information was good. He put aside the bad feelings he had. But when he thought till then, something else popped into his mind. I forgot why I felt bad for a moment there. Chung Myung opened his lips, looking at the man. Branch leader. Uh? What kind of position do you have in the beggars union? Well, even if you search the entire world, the number won't exceed a hundred. Then can you catch the people under you? Under me? I can grab anyone by their toes. Is that so? 
Chung Myung turned his head. And Hong Dae Kwang, who saw that face, flinched. Chung Myung's eyes were burning with something. I have something for you to do. Please catch a beggar for me. What is that? There is a beggar named Jong Pal in Wuhan. For you to get out of here, my condition is that you bring that one in front of me. Jong Pal? It isn't that difficult. What is it? What relationship do you have? I was blessed by him. A very deep grace was shown to him. It was the beggar who gave Chung Myung the most intense shock and beating when he was reborn. Chung Myung snorted and said. Grace should be repaid. It wasn't known what happened, but it looked like a certain beggar had pinched the nose of a tiger. Hong Dae Kwang could only express his deep condolences in advance to the beggar.